This video is about the difference in uh, population means and in the first case we're going to talk about dependent samples, what that means. So we'll talk about independent versus dependent samples and then we'll do some hypothesis testing. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to do a confidence interval but you'll, you'll get the drill after the hypothesis testing. So first we need to talk about dependent versus independent samples. So dependent samples are when there's some pairing somehow. Um, sometimes I've seen this with a before and after, uh, so it's the same person before and after, so you can look at that difference, whether they improved their weight, did it drop, or did their test scores improve. Um, I've also seen this with twin studies, and so they do something with one twin and the other, and then they look at the difference because they're paired up. Uh, husband and wife, I've seen that. So dependent samples, they have to be paired some, somehow. Uh, independent samples is just one random sample over here, one random sample over here, and we say we do a, a drug test, so we get one drug, the or one group the placebo, the other drug, or the other <laughs> group the drug, and then we compare the average responses there. So we have two different populations, don't have to be the same sample size, um, and so we would just compare the means. So when we have dependent samples, what we analyze is the mean difference. So each pair has a difference, and so we analyze the average difference. When we have independent samples, we look at the difference of the means. So language here is important, and, it, and when you're a student and you're just kind of getting your grasp on this, it can be a little overwhelming. So dependent samples, we're looking at the average difference. Independent samples, we're looking at the difference in the averages. That's going to take some time to wrap your head around that. Of course, on the test, that's going to be the issue is distinguishing which one do I have. Uh, one red flag, it doesn't, it's not perfect, but if your sample sizes are not the same, it has to be independent samples. Now, you could have the same sample size, but the two samples are independent uh, and they're not paired at all, so that's not perfect that way. But if they are different, then it can't be dependent samples. So let's look at an example here. Um, say I'm wondering if a particular supplement can improve your athletic performance. So we take a sample of individuals, we test them on some skill. I think I'm doing here, this one was like, I don't know, bench presses or something. Um, and then, um, we give them this supplement and then we test them again and we see if it improved it or not. So what we would do here is we'd have all these pairs and we'd look at the difference uh, between each pair. So like for the example here, I've got before and after, um, that's a negative two. So the after was actually higher. Uh, for B, I've got a difference of one, C of two, this is individual C, individual D, individual E. So I have all this before, after data looking whether it improved or, uh, so they actually, did it get better, did, could they do more or uh, was it the same or was it less? And so what we want to do now is we want to look at this difference and, and perform a test about this. Do we think this, what do we think about this difference? So in order to do that, we need to know how is that difference distributed? How is that the average difference distributed? So um, this is the distribution of the mean difference. And you should notice something here. This looks kind of familiar. This is a T distribution where instead of X bar minus mu X, bar over and then the standard deviation, now it's uh, it's D bar. And so it's it's the distribution of those D's. And so you can see here very similar to the distribution of X bar, where it's X bar minus mu over S over square root of N. Now it's D bar minus mu over S over square root of N. Um, same conditions, simple random sampling, they have to be matched pairs. Uh, the sample has no outliers and um, from a normally distributed population. So um, we can do then hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. I think we're going to focus in the video here on hypothesis testing, but you can do both. So your null hypothesis is typically, I don't know that I've seen this anything other than this, but typically the null hypothesis is that the mean difference is zero. And then you're looking, is the mean difference positive, uh, positive, negative, or do you just not know, is it not equal to zero? All right, so let's do an example. Considering that data regarding uh, supplement use, is there evidence at the 5% level to say that the supplement increased the number of bench, repeti bench press repetitions? So before you do this, if you're looking at the average difference, you have to define what your difference is. And you can do it 
um, either before minus after or after minus before, but then that changes your hypothesis test. So I'm going to define it as before minus after. So if we think about when we do our steps, our null and alternative hypothesis, our null is that the mean difference is zero. Our alternative now, we, we think that we're testing whether this increased the number of bench press repetitions. So then we would think the after would be bigger. So then our alternative hypothesis is that we think the mean difference is negative because we think the before is going to be smaller than the after. So I'm not sure if that makes sense. You could switch this around and set your difference to be after minus before, but then you would think the mean difference is positive. All right, so now once we have that, then the same steps, alpha test statistic p-value. So let me go back over here, and I've got this data up. You should have this in the sample, the chapter 11 example data. So we've got before and after. So we're going to do stat um, t stats to sample with data. And sample one was the before, sample two. Oh, hold on here. That's not the right one. I need paired, right? So T stats paired. I need them to be paired. All right, this will be better. Okay, this is better. Before, after, uh, save the differences. I don't really need that. Uh, I am doing a hypothesis test, and I think the difference is negative, right? I think the difference is negative. All right, and yeah, we're good. All right, compute. So there's my t-stat. It is a negative t-stat. That's good. The p-value is pretty small. So it is less than our level of significance. So when we do our steps, we would reject the null hypothesis. And there is enough evidence to support the claim that this supplement increased the number of bench press repetitions. So you kind of get the flow of these uh, hypothesis tests. What's different here is that first step where we're setting up uh, the difference. Ah, it looks like we do have a confidence interval. I've been working too long in these videos. Uh, I forgot that I had that in here. So let's do a confidence interval. Uh, we'll go back over here. So actually, I'm just going to do the edit here and just change it from a hypothesis test to a confidence interval and compute. There's my lower and upper limit. So when we do that, um, lower and upper limit, so we're 95% confident that the mean difference is between negative 2.2 and negative 0.1, which doesn't include zero. So we're 95% confident that we are negative there. Um, what's interesting here, it, it does reinforce our conclusion, but boy, it's, um, it's close, right? It's not like it's way different from zero. So let's take a little visual at this. So 0% would be that there's no difference. Negative would be that the supplement worked because the before was less than the after. Positive would be that uh, the supplement was counterproductive, the before was greater than, um, than the after. And we have our mean difference here. And boy, I mean, it's, it, we definitely have enough evidence to say that the mean difference is negative, but it's not like it was like this huge jump, right? I mean, the, what is the, the X bar? It's got to be negative 1, something like that. So according to this supplement, improved the number of bench presses by about 1. So the effect size of the supplement was pretty small. And this is where we really get into this, this second level thinking about hypothesis tests and what they mean. One is just cut and dry, statistically significant or not. The other, which is really important and more sophisticated, and what real statisticians do is they look at, well, okay, so the test was significant. There, there is enough evidence for me to claim that the, the supplement was useful. But what's the effect size of that? Did, did the supplement have a significant effect? And I mean practically significant. So that's an interesting discussion here and, and not necessarily as cut and dry. All right, so that's it. Uh, that's the end of the video from uh, dependent samples looking at the difference in means. So next time we'll look at independent samples.